Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be going over relocating a battery and putting it in the trunk. So there's a lot of reasons why you want to put the battery in the trunk. Uh, main reason usually ends up being for looks. You want it to look cool when you pop the, uh, the hood open, you see just the engine and a very, very clean and organized wiring going to the engine. Uh, if you get the starter solenoid out of there and if you get a voltage regulator, make that obsolete and you put the battery in the trunk, your engine bay looks a thousand times better. So that's one reason. Another reason, a little bit more security. There's no starter solenoid right there and there's no battery right there. It's a little bit harder to jump it. Usually we hide the starter solenoid further down on the frame rail. Uh, that makes it harder to get to, but at the same time makes it harder to get to, right? But then again, the battery is going to be locked uh, by turnkey in the trunk. A lot of times you put a battery on and off switch on some cars, some cars you do not. But this is going to show you the whole process of just getting it back there and routing that battery cable safely. That's the biggest key to this entire installation, safety, because this type of setup this type of cable can burn your car to the ground if you don't do it right. But if you do it the right way, it is very safe and it makes your car a lot more secure to someone trying to steal it. All right, guys, let's go ahead and put the battery in the trunk. Uh, I kind of use a similar box every single time I do it. And how I mount it to the floor is a little bit different depending on vehicle. This vehicle has these ribs in here. The gas tank is really close underneath, so I can't put bolts through it. So I just simply just made me a little bracket, welded the bracket to the floor. Then I'm bolting the battery box uh, to the bracket. So this is actually gonna be really safe. It's gonna be sound. It's not gonna move anywhere. This battery isn't going anywhere. What we're gonna do now is box this off and bolt the box down also using this. This is a kit. I didn't make this. This is an all thread from the local hardware store, um, even though it is pretty much all thread. This is a battery box kit I like to use a lot. And it has these nice holes all the way already in here. It's aluminum, it looks nice. And what I like about the aluminum is on a more custom job where we're actually doing the carpet and everything, we can cover this in carpet. Uh, we can cover this in leather pleats, whatever it takes, it's a nice box to use. Now, the only thing I add here, are these rubber grommets, the battery wire is gonna go through here. So the battery wire, when it passes through anything, Make sure it's touching rubber and it's not touching the steel. We don't want this to vibrate around, cut open and burn your car to the ground because this part of the process actually can be very, very dangerous if it's done wrong. So what I have here also is a little plastic vent. We're gonna have a little rubber hose that goes through the floor. So when this thing's charging, at some point in time when this battery's worn out or the alternator's worn out or alternator defects, overcharges the battery, we're gonna get sulfuric fumes in here from overcharging or a battery that's dead trying to uh, overcompensate. And we don't want those fumes in the car. So that's what this is for. It's gonna take our fumes out. We're gonna put this right through the floor and uh, so it can air out through the floor. And what I put on here is a mega fuse. Now this is gonna come right off the battery from the positive side, boom, then go out to the front of the car to the starter solenoid. There's a lot of length of big uh, electrical cable, cable that can burn this whole car down to the ground if something goes wrong. So by putting this 250 amp mega fuse in here, uh, this is all gonna get covered up and protected. There's rubber grommets for these, so all of this is gonna be covered up and protected. But if for some reason our wire on the frame rubs on the frame to the point where the positive grounds itself out, it's not gonna burn the car to the ground. It's gonna blow this fuse you're gonna be safe uh, and you know, you're know you not gonna be calling your insurance. So keep in mind for this kind of stuff, guys, don't pass through anything without rubber grommets. And if your battery is in the trunk, put a mega fuse on it. You can get this from, uh, what brand is this? You can get this right off of Amazon though. Look up automotive mega fuses. Um, for some reason, I think it's like a Petronix brand or something, I have to relook it up. But I always get the same exact fuse here. Also, what I'm going to do is just flip this around. That's gonna be on the inside. So here's our box. There we go. Now let's put the lid on. 
Now you can see how this is going to be secure in here. So this lid goes on. We bolt it down. Nice secure box. You can wrap this in leather, wrap it in carpet, make it look really good. And you don't have to spend a bunch of time bending up all this aluminum or knowing how to TIG. It just bolts right together. But if you do know how to TIG, buy this kit and just TIG up the edges here. This thing's already done, good to go. So I like it. Now what we're gonna do is run our cables. And here I got these from Napa. You get this stuff locally, which is nice. We have a uh, black and red battery terminals here. And all we have to do is uh, strip the end of that wire, put it in here, screw it down, and it's gonna crimp itself. So these are nice setup. And I like everything uh, labeled red and black, personally. So you never know who's gonna get this car later, what mechanics gonna work on it later. Make this kind of stuff stupid obvious on, you know, which one's which so it could be super safe. So let's go ahead and run our positive wire out to our little fuse box down here. Then we'll be able to run that wire all the way to the front of the car. Now there's a mathematical equation for how thick your wire needs to be, for how many amps, for how many length. And uh, I'm just gonna save you guys the hassle. I usually use one aught or two aught cable. Uh, one aught is just a standard car Two watt is bigger, in case you didn't know that, and two watts more for something that's gonna have air compressors on it, uh, a big radio, subwoofers in the back, stuff like that. That's when I run the bigger cable. So just a standard driving car, radio, uh, normal windows, let's see, small block Chevy is what's gonna have in it. And uh, yeah, hardly anything electrical in this car at all. One watt is gonna be just fine. Uh, one watt for the power, one watt for the negative. And uh, we have really nice clips that hold this down, rubber grommets that's gonna pass through the steel. We just had to figure out where we're gonna put it. And always, always, always plan to run the negative all the way up to the belt housing. I always run the, run the negative to the block, the engine block. I like doing the, the, the bell housing because it's up underneath the car, you don't see it visually, it looks nice when you open the engine compartment instead of running big old ground all the way up to the alternator bracket or you know, uh, uh, the motor mount. So bell housing works out really good. And uh, dep it never, it doesn't matter what kind of uh, motor that you have, it always pretty much requires for the ground to go to the motor for it to run the best that it could possibly run. And it's just safer that way too. So let's get this hooked up and uh, let's get this run, run down on the frame. All right, so let's go ahead and strip this to get it onto the battery terminal here. All I'm going to do is just eyeball the length. We don't want a whole bunch of this sticking out the back. We don't want <laughs> we don't want the the power to uh, jump anywhere. So I'm just going to cut this with a razor blade. This is really simple. And I'm probably going to put some red shrink wrap on the end of it. I just always like to have as much protection on the positive wire as possible. So this just slides in there like that. Well, it doesn't look like it's going to need the protection, but it's going to butt right up to it. That's exactly where we want it to be. If for some reason you cut this too long, that's what I'm trying to avoid, that extra hanging out right there. You can see it like that. Get yourself some shrink wrap and cover that up. But we're not ready to clamp this down just yet because this is actually gonna go inside the battery box. Inside the battery box, that's where it's gonna get clamped down. All right guys, now let's show you how to put this type of end on. You're going to have to put one of these ends on, uh, on in quite a few spots actually. So make sure you have yourself a hammer crimp. This is a hammer crimp. It's gonna crimp these big style eyelets here. I've used the big other crimpers where you, it's like a big giant pliers and uh, I think they kind of suck. So I always fall back to this. You can get this at a local auto parts store. Most like O'Reilly's have them. We're gonna put this grommet over this first. Then we're going to eyeball the depth here of how far the wire is actually gonna go in. And we're 
going to cut this off just like we did on the other end. All right, there's that. Let's go ahead and put our eyelid on here. Butts up nicely. We're always trying to avoid excess wire on the end of that eyelid there. Throw this in our little hammer crimp here. Get that where we want it. All we do is just got to beat it a little bit. I usually hit it more times than it's needed. And always try to make sure if you can pull any wire apart, big, small, anything. So that's not going anywhere. There's a little rubber grommet that's going to hold it or keep it safe here. And this end is going to connect to that fuse that we put that on the front side of the box just to make it safer from throwing lawn chairs and stuff in there. All right, so here's the rubber grommets that I use through the passages from uh, in the floorboard, out the floorboard, out the firewall, all that kind of stuff. This fits the wire perfect. So here here's rubber grommet. These can be a little bit pain in the ass to actually cut the hole and actually get these to fit because you want the hole to be just bigger than the inside ring so all this lip can actually sit on the shoulder and hold the wire in place. What I do to get it through the hole is I spray it with my uh, tire shine. This is non-greasy tire shine, this is Grouts. You don't have to use this brand. This is just what I use here in the shop. And uh, this helps it slide into that a lot easier and it's not all greasy and nasty. Now also after you get everything all ran and ready to go, I put black RTV around this hole because once it's there and it's in place, that wire doesn't need to move anymore. And it's just going to seal it up from any water coming up into the cab or air blowing in or out, stuff like that. Uh, this is a good affordable option. You can buy these on Amazon uh, uh, on a higher end build, which we do all the time. There's actually bulkhead fittings for electrical too. Bulkhead fittings for brake lines, bulkhead fittings for connectors, connectors that plug right into the firewall. You can really go down a rabbit's hole and invest a lot of money into that if that's what you're going for on a super custom electrical build. This is just a standard one. These are gonna work good. We'll have, there'll be one less cut inside the main wire. So from the batteries, uh, fuse box, all the way to the star of solenoid, solid wire. So let's finally get this ran and out of the way. All right guys, here's how the battery cable is ran. We have these nice battery clamps that uh, holds it against the body and it's plastic so it's not gonna vibrate and cut into the wire. They had to go through the frame in this one spot. And just a standard way to do it is you can put some uh, hose around it, cut the hose down the middle so it slides over the, the wires, then run it through whatever steel you have around the frame. It's kind of a just easy. Um, you can get giant rubber grommets that work also. So if you're doing something with really higher quality uh, custom, that's what I recommend. Then this goes down here to the frame and it just runs all the way up to the front. So these zip tie wires, you might say you don't exactly need them. And to hold the wires here, you don't. These clamps do really, really well. What these zip ties are here for is to step the wire off of the frame. So any vibration or moving here is going to be the zip tie against the frame and not the wire insulation against the frame. So at no point in time during this whole run here uh, is this wire going to ever vibrate and you know, uh, jump to ground. So we want to be very careful with this power wire. We want to overkill it. We want to overdo it all the way to the front. Then moving along, I don't have a lift, so we're crawling around on the floor. Moving along, it comes up over this cross member here. And since my customer is changing this out for a small block Chevy, I've kept that in mind this whole time. This cross member is probably going to come out. And when I measure it from the crank, to the bell housing, to the transmission for a small block. Since I have one, I did my measurement and his cross member is gonna be right about here somewhere. So he could put a tubular cross member in there. He can take these two off and move this whole cable up and down quite a bit to uh, get above or below his cross member. So he's gonna have plenty of room to work, cut out this cross member and add one for the small block Chevy's uh, 350 transmission. But that's just something personally I'm keeping in mind. Then let's scoot up here to the starter solenoid that I've hidden.
Now, thanks to this exhaust, you can't really see my starter solenoid. You can see it from the top easier, but I'm just showing you here that my battery cable is going to go right to the starter solenoid there. Then the uh, wiring harness is going to get its power off the starter solenoid. I'm not going to run another long wire all the way back um, for uh, the harness. The harness can get its power right there at that connection. Then this is the ground uh, operated starter solenoid. It's my favorite one from Vintage Auto Garage. All we have to do is ground that side, which allows us to have a very easy push button uh, on the dash. Very old school push button still going to work on this. All right, guys, it's just that easy. Just knowing what tools you need and some advice on how to do it. So it's simple, makes your car a little bit safer having the battery in the trunk. Just make sure you have a way to vent that battery and make sure you put a fuse on it just in case, uh, God forbid, the, that battery cable grounds itself somewhere in the process. Fuse pops, boom, it's disconnected, super safe. So those are the two biggest takeaway, guys. Thank you for watching. Now that you have this information, get out in your garage and get your shift together.